Jackson State offensive weapon Seven McGee posted online that he is back this week for their matchup against their their hated rival, Southern Jaguars. Let's talk about what seven could mean for the JSU offense after the bumper. Stay tuned. is going on everybody what is going on everybody my name is jeff lighty jr this is the victor formation sports show right here on jeff lighty jr youtube facebook wherever get your content do me a favor hit that thumbs up button like share subscribe and notification bell because we upload all the time now seven mcgee he, hey he got right to it he got right to it on x formerly known as twitter and he said hey active this week meaning he's gonna be on the field meaning the player that a lot of jackson state fans was looking forward to the most in seeing on the field this year, the Oregon transfer, Seven McGee. Now, Seven McGee is the do-everything running back, wide receiver, just offensive weapon, kind of like that Dexter McCluster type of player that we've seen in the past on different uh, in the NFL and in college football that just can kind of line up anywhere and everywhere. You'll see him line up in the backfield. You'll see him split out wide. You'll see him in the slot, and you'll just see him with the ball in his hands from various positions. But we haven't seen it yet. You know, Seven McGee, it wasn't reported that he was going to miss the South Carolina State game. But then you were watching the game. And even though Jackson State was putting a hammering on a South Carolina State, he wasn't there. And a lot of people told you, oh, yeah, he'll be back for FAMU. You know what I'm saying? We saving him for FAMU. We saving him. He'll be back. He'll be back. And it's like, okay, okay, you know, sure. waiting to see it. Then FAMU came. And FAMU came, pause, and they there was still no seven. There was still no Seven McGee. And then it was revealed to us that he had a nagging little, very minor injury, but they wanted to play the long game as opposed to rushing him back for the fam game and save him for the long game, which is the long game of the season. Well, fam, you, you weren't able to score, you know, 28 to nothing at halftime. You finally got things going in the second half, 28 to 10. And a lot of people were wondering, man, if would this have looked different if seven played? What would this have looked like if seven played? Well, we'll never know. But at the same time, it's like, OK, well, that's gone. Fam, you handled business. Fam, you did they thing. Fam, you came to play. Now you have to do your thing, meaning win out if you even want a chance of making it back to the SWAC championship game. And a big part of who can help you make it back to the SWAC championship game winning out in conference is a guy like Seven McGee. You know, Seven McGee is a playmaker. Seven McGee was a high four-star recruit. He went to Oregon, didn't work out. Now he's someone is looking to make plays. Seven McGee is a guy that Jackson State themselves had featured on a ton of things. When they did their Under Armour campaign stuff, they put out their Seven McGee. You know, they put him out there along with Rico Powers and Jalen Hughes. The and, and the thing about seven, the reason why this is big for JSU is because they need another home run hitter. As we saw in their game against FAMU, the offense was lacking. The offense couldn't get anything going in the first half. Now, you can blame that on Jason Brown or blame that on Jason Brown's injury or blame it on whatever, but it didn't happen. In the second half, you saw more, more production from the offense. Irv Mulligan was able to get it going. Rico Powers made some big plays, but they still needed more. Obviously, they needed more. And FAMU was just hitting them in the mouth and was playing the time of possession game in the second half. So they didn't get very many possessions. At the same time, when that happens, you need home run hitters. Right now, Jackson State, I think, has two legit home run hitters. Rico Powers has shown he can get open. He's caught at least one. He's caught a deep ball in both games, both against South Carolina State and against FAMU. He shows that he can beat one-on-one -on -one coverage. Give him a chance. If they single coverage Rico on a post route, a go route, or whatever, give him a chance. Irv Mulligan has shown that he can hit home runs. He hits the hard. I mean, he hits the holes hard, and he makes plays. He breaks tackles. He doesn't go down on first contact. He's a home run hitter. You can never have enough home run hitters. Seven McGee, he's supposed to be one of those home run hitters as well. And if you add a third home run hitter, to your lineup, a third guy that can score from anywhere on the field, a third guy who can make things happen when it doesn't look like they can happen, when it looks like all, all is lost, and a guy that can settle your quarterback. 
and a guy that can just, hey, give him the ball, let him do his thing. I think seven can be that type of player. Now, it's 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 a wait and see type of thing. This is just what I think. It's a wait and see type of thing. But if you are going to run the table in the conference, because that's what you have to do, and you need some help from FAMU, but if you are going to run the table in the conference, you need to continue to progress on offense. Getting a guy like Seven McGee does not hurt that cause at all. It actually helps it a ton. It, it helps it a ton. And we all really want to see what he's like. You know, it's one thing to read the hype about people, for coaches to hype up a guy, for recruiting rankings to hype up a guy. But we want to see what he's like. We want to see what he looks like when he touches that turf. We want to see what he looks like when his feet is on the ground, when other guys that aren't his teammates are chasing him around, when the ball actually gets in his hands and not what they tell us he's like when the ball touches his hands. That's what we want to see. We've seen what it looks like with Irv Mulligan. We've seen what it looks like with Rico Powers. Looks pretty freaking good. It looks pretty freaking good. Getting a guy like Seven McGee back in the lineup to help your offense, to boost your quarterback, whoever it may be, whether it's Jason Brown, it looks like it'll be Jason Brown at first anyway, and then possibly seeing a mix of Zy McDonald in there. Both of those guys, to get them comfortable, to get them in the rhythm or flow of the game, having a guy like Seven McGee and the potential of the home run threat, a third home run hitter, is really big for an offense. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Seven McGee lets us know he will be playing in this game against Southern. And to get him back during Southern Week makes it that much better. To get him back during Southern Week makes it that much better. Because if you want to stick it to somebody, it's cool. It was nice to stick it to South Carolina State in the Swag Miak Challenge. You know, fam, you game is what it is. Fam, you stuck it to you. But wouldn't it be nice to get back on the winning track by sticking it to your rival, your bitter rival in Southern, in their crib, in Baton Rouge. We have to wait and see if that happens. Leave your thoughts in the comments down below. Leave your thoughts in the comments down below. Seven McGee, Jackson State offensive weapon, is back this week. What will he look like? Guess we have to wait and see. My name is Jeff Lighty Jr. This is the Victor Formation Sports Show right here on Jeff Lighty Jr. YouTube, Facebook, wherever you get your content. Do me a favor. Hit that thumbs up button. Like, share, subscribe. Also, hit the notification bell because we upload all the time. Leave your thoughts in the comments, and you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at jlighty7. That is on Twitter and Instagram at jlighty7. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for tuning in. I'll see you next time. Peace.